This video is sponsored by Storyblocks. Hey guys, Irene here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I will be reviewing the new Canon RF 100mm f2.8 L macro IS USM lens. This lens is not out yet, but it is available for pre-order now. I have tested the EF version a year ago. If you guys are interested in that video, I will link it in the description. So I was super excited for the newer and improved RF version. I have tested it over a few different photo shoots and on variety of subjects, and I'm really excited to show you the final images. But as per usual, a quick disclaimer, I am not a review channel and I don't focus on the specs and the technicalities, but rather show you the results and share my real and personal experience with the gear as a photographer. Also, I am a Canon ambassador, so of course I love all Canon gear, but I always try to be as unbiased as I possibly can. So what has improved? First of all, this is world's first medium telephoto autofocus macro lens with maximum magnification of 1.4 times. It has optical image stabilizer with up to 5 stops of shake correction. They added a spherical aberration control ring that allows to adjust the shape and character of bokeh. And we get the signature control ring that you find on RF lenses. And if you would like to read more about the specs of this lens, I will leave the link to the official Canon page in the description. First, I took this lens to a portrait photo shoot with me and photographed beautiful Courtney. This lens is of course a macro lens and probably most people would associate it with macro images of nature, bugs, flowers, but this lens is also absolutely beautiful for portraits. I actually kind of like you did a little bit on the side and yeah. Maybe chin down even more. Yes. That is very cute. Amazing. What if you look a little bit this way? Yes, but eyes on me. This lens is super sharp, just like all other RF lenses that I have tested so far. I love that the lens focuses on the iris itself rather than the eyelashes or the bridge of the nose. And combined with the R5 and its amazing autofocusing system, it's really a no-brainer even when you are shooting portraits wide open. So I love this lens for close-ups, but when it comes to full body or waist-up photos, I do still prefer the 85mm 1.2. Here's a little comparison of the two. Both are shot wide open, so 2.8 for the 100mm and 1.2 for the 85 I find the bokeh on the 100mm quite busy when you step back, so personally here I prefer a faster lens, but I know that not everyone loves the super blurry background so let me know which one you prefer and before we go on i wanted to thank storyblocks for sponsoring today's video storyblocks is a subscription service providing high quality affordable copyright free stock footage animation after effect templates motion backgrounds green screen pictures music and sound effects they really have it all and you can download as much content as you want with the unlimited subscription, making it super easy and affordable to use high quality stock items. I have been using this awesome YouTube like and subscribe animation for all of my new videos and I got it from Storyblocks. It was extremely easy to install and use. Plus the music that you guys are hearing is from Storyblocks as well. I highly recommend you guys check them out at storyblocks.com slash Irene Rudnick and thanks again to Storyblocks for sponsoring my channel. For these next shots, I wanted to try something different, so I decided to take pictures of some flower arrangements in my living room. I used the V-flat from V-flat World as the backdrop folded in half 
And for lighting, I did my usual single Godox flash bounced off the wall. I was going for a very dramatic painterly kind of look, so I wanted the light to be quite contrasting but soft at the same time and this technique provided just the right look. I also misted the flowers with water to add some visual interest. Then for the lilies, I did a similar lighting but I added another flash with orange gel behind the flowers directed at the background to create a gradient effect and lighten it up a bit. By the way, all these images of flowers are very minimally edited, mostly just a little bit of contrast and some color correction. So let's talk about the spherical aberration control ring. I have never used a feature like this before and I found it quite interesting. When you twist the ring to the minus side, the bokeh will become very soft with blurry edges. And when you twist it to the opposite side to the plus, Canon describes the look as bubble bokeh look. The blur is more defined and sharp, kind of reminds me of a vintage lens look. I do wish that the subject would stay sharp when these are applied though, because as you can see in this case, the flower which I focused on is now not as sharp and kind of has this glowy blurry look to it. It's quite pretty when photographing flowers, but when I tried this with some portraits, it didn't look so good in my opinion. I think this has potential for some really artistic photography, but I personally probably wouldn't be using it much. Now what really impressed me was the video. All this footage that I'm showing you was shot handheld and it's straight out of camera and it looks so good. The lens stabilization combined with the in-camera stabilization in R5 makes for super smooth and sharp video. The autofocusing is also amazing, it's very fast and accurate and I love that I can just tap on the screen to focus on the specific area. The 1.4 times magnification is no joke. You can get really up close and personal with whatever you are photographing and I definitely noticed this right away when I used this lens. With the EF version sometimes I couldn't get those really tiny details but now I didn't have this problem. I photographed this miniature model my brother made and look at all those detail shots. So I mentioned the advantage of the optical image stabilizer for video, but it's also of course great for images. Here at the very end of the photo shoot I saw a butterfly, so I quickly snapped a few pictures of her. I'm imagining it's a girl. She was moving a lot, but I was still able to get some nice sharp pictures, which was a lot harder to do with the EF lens. Uh, the only time I got shaky images was when I was trying to photograph some tree branches that were blowing in the wind frantically, and even those images are actually not as bad as you think so overall I'm super impressed so to sum it up if you love the EF version you will be super happy with the upgrade it's an amazing macro lens and it's also quite versatile it will be great for portrait photographers wedding photographers of course those who shoot macro photography also would be awesome for commercial product photo shoots 
Uh, would I personally get it? I'm really tempted to. So let me know if I should or if you are planning on getting it. Also, please let me know if you guys like to see more gear review videos from me. I actually really enjoy making these. And of course, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!